Okay, Junaid, we are live today. Hi, right, everybody. Mm -hmm. Happy Monday. Good to see everybody. And I've got Junaid in here with me today. Now, before we dive into studio prep, obviously, Junaid has an amazing studio behind us. And he's somebody that's been in our masterminds for a while. And and Junaid's studio like blows everybody in the group away. Just <laughs> wait till you see what's actually behind this. So Junaid's been kind enough to give us time today to answer questions on studio prep and to make sure that we're getting our lighting, our sound, all that stuff. Just the studio simplicity. If, if you're like me, and I know you yeah, are. Oh, oh, hang, on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Sorry. If you're, hey, everybody, I'm pulling up my phone. Obviously, you all know that. Danny, what's up? If you're like me, you've probably done the thing where you sit at your dining room table or in your bedroom or in a hallway or in your living room and you pile up all the lamps you can find in your house and you gather them around you and then you get your studio and you get your microphone right and then you try four different microphones and it's like an hour and a half before you get to go live for a two minute conversation in your Facebook profile. It's so annoying. So Junaid has made it simple where he can just walk in, push a button and launch. So anyway, Junaid, welcome to the Inner Circle Facebook group, which you've been a part of for a long time. It's a privilege Thank to you, have Chris. you helping us. Thanks, friend. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Chris, for that intro. I really appreciate it. It's been amazing learning from you, learning from the group, learning from the mastermind folks that have been with, and it's it's just amazing. All the support and all the, the gosh, I can't, I, I'm losing words, but it's it's been amazing being part of this group. And it's it's just it's just awesome. Thank you so That's much. So Dude, you're the best, man. I appreciate you giving back to us. Uh, CN, welcome. It's good to see you too. Um, so yes, dude, tell us what to do. You are the guru on this thing. Uh, by the way, Junaid was hanging out in Pat Flynn's group recently and all of a sudden Pat <laughs> gives a shout like, oh my gosh, what is that? Student? How do you do all that? So Junaid's uh, definitely known for what he does. So Junaid, help us see kind of where you came from so we can be a little bit relatable because you look like such a genius doing what you do. Um, tell us kind of where you came from and how all this works. Absolutely. So, and tell me if you want me to share a screen or, or do any kind of, if you want to show anything. Yeah, we can share my screen. Uh, yeah. got a little, uh, a little Absolutely. walk through memory lane. If, if you say, if you think so, you know, by I'll the way, uh, Veronica, uh, uh, I have a challenge living on my boat, no space, but I have managed with lights and camera. No yes. kidding, Veronica. That's super badass, by the way. That is super badass. <laughs> and Junaid, um, I'm sure we'll have lots of um, boat tips. That's pretty much his presentation is about, is how to do lighting <laughs> on a boat. <laughs> yeah. So here's here's the beautiful thing about being in a boat or being in a car or being in a van is that you don't have to prep too much because it's already personalized to who you are. So and and as I go through this this journey. It's it's around creating that environment mm -hmm. that's that you can just be turning on the video and people know exactly where you're sitting, where you are, and you're comfortable with it. You know, I was not comfortable when I got started. So just to walk through this little journey, how to create Yes. Right. So problems we all face recording video. By the and way, Brennan just jumped in here. Brennan's one of our elite agency uh, members as well. And he's, Junaid's the man when it comes to home studio setup. For real, he is, Brennan. You're so right. Sorry, Junaid. You're going <laughs> to get a lot of better. Appreciate it. No, no, no you're, you're good. You're good. <laughs> this group is like a noisy family at a holiday. <laughs> <laughs> you know, right? So here's some of the problems that we started facing. Hey, Sian, have you ever failed a recording video content because you feel your video isn't the best? Hmm. Like anytime that I was looking in the video, I was like, I don't know if that's something that I want to do. You know, feeling uncomfortable showing up on camera because it's like talking in the mirror, right? When you're talking in the mirror, you immediately get like, like, oh my God, I got to fix that zit on my face. You know, you immediately thinking about, oh my God, what is everybody going to say? What, is, what, you know, finding that backdrop and then a lot of a lot of times we're not sharing videos from our bathrooms because maybe we have clothes hanging in the you know <laughs> so having that right having that thing set up the way awesome veronica green screen green screen is a, is a, is a lifesaver for a lot but again if you have a setup that tells who you are then boom so what what did I do, right? What did I do when I was having trouble 
I would record videos outside, outdoors, because everybody knows the outdoor. Everybody knows the back of your car, right? So mm -hmm. when you're getting, when you when you're creating content in your boat, in your van, everybody knows that they they immediately know where you're coming from. Mm -hmm. Like one time, uh, there was a good friend. Um, I can't remember his name, but he was traveling cross country, and he's decided to go live on Facebook. He's like, "Hey, give me a call. I'm driving cross country." And you know exactly what you're gonna expect. So I got on the phone with him. It was pretty cool. Hmm. But one of the what ends up happening when you're trying to create content is you look in the mirror, you look in the video, and you just you got to change it. You got to change the man in the mirror. So you got to hmm. change that backdrop. So I went through this, and I was like, this is not fun. You know, it sounds like you might need a home studio. So, um, totally truthful about these these slides i haven't prepped enough but <laughs> this sounds like you need a home studio so these questions all lead to hey you need a home studio because what does a home studio give you it gives you confidence it gives you a place to go hit record and it was it was hard in the beginning you were so exposed mm -hmm. it, was that in the boat veronica yeah just, i'm sure uh, it was and just feeling that feeling you know we all get of just by the way, I like your authenticity, Junaid. Thanks for just being real here because that's the way we are. Yeah. No clients looking in this group. It just does. Um, you know how when you first go live, you feel just emotionally exposed, I guess? It, it's kind of my voice sounds weird. I don't mm -hmm. really look like that. I look way better than that and I sound way better than that. Mm -hmm. um, and then the lighting and then, yeah, I know. And I, right now, like I've got a skateboard injury up here on my forehead. Y'all have known about that for a few months. I've been yeah. And, and I feel that like when I'm on camera, you know, yeah, go ahead. Yep. So here are some of the things that I to think about when you're setting up a studio, right? So very few questions. What are you trying to accomplish with the home studio? A lot of us are creating content. A lot of us are going live on zoom. Are you you're recording a podcast? You're doing this weekly or monthly or daily videos all around what you are what you want to be known for right mm -hmm. so think things to think about when you're creating a studio what all of this matters for you to you mm -hmm. again are you doing this by yourself a lot of us are doing it by ourselves we are home alone <laughs> or home with kids but we have our own half office or you know we're either set up you know put up on in your dining room living room family room whatever it is and then, so again, think about these things. Do you have an assistant to help you with the copy, to help you with anything at all, right? Mm. Going through this process. And again, this studio, will this be in an office building or your home? A lot of people are going back to the office because nobody else is showing up. It's like, hey, I've got the office to myself. Mm -hmm. Maybe I can set this place up so I can record my content, record my videos. Think about all of those things when you are going to setting up your studio. Can I say one thing right there, Junaid? Um, yeah. That's a, um, yeah, Veronica. Um, I'm nodding my head to a lot of this. Yeah, I know, right? Me too, no, uh, Veronica. The the location, like Junaid's about to dive deep into like how to get it all set up. The location that you pick, I can't overemphasize how important it is to think through a spot that you could potentially leave alone. If it's a corner in a room, um, when I first started podcasting, Junaid, I never told you this, but back in mm -hmm. 2013 or 14, I started a podcast called I Share Hope, mm -hmm. interviewing people that could share hope like, and help. I was going through depression and anxiety and all kind of hard stuff. And so my therapist recommended I do that. Long story short, there was no place in my house then to do that. So I literally sat in the attic, which is now built out and part of another part of our house. I sat in the attic to record, record a podcast because I could control a backdrop and lighting and then it got to be August in Memphis and it was really hot. Um, but anyway, yeah, pick a spot so you can leave something alone and save yourself so much time every time you do this. Um, by the way, Rock, welcome, dude. The Rock says, Junaid, awesome. Love this content. Okay, Junaid, sorry, no, you keep going. Awesome. You know, Chris, you mentioned a really awesome point there. Have a place set up so you don't have to touch it again. Mm -hmm. Now, what other rooms in our house do we leave them as is and not touch them again? <laughs> <laughs> I 
we have our bedroom. I was going to say, have... I know my bed is not made right now. <laughs> right. Or you could leave it alone because nobody's going to come in there. <laughs> our dining room, uh -huh. right? Our kitchen, our family room, living room. All of these rooms have a dedicated purpose for them. Playroom, your garage, your workshop. Sure, we could be using our garage for storage sometimes, or you'd be using your dining room table for, for storage or, or you know when you're doing work. But these rooms are already decided on what they're going to do. And a lot of these homes, a lot of their, our new homes, we have office suites. Like they're like, oh, this could be a bedroom or this could be an office. Mm -hmm. So we have, you know, think about that studio being a dedicated room and think about it in this way, right? You're going to be spent, you spend a lot of money. We spend a ton of money on setting up our other rooms. We decorate our living room because we're going to have people come in. You're not going to, like, if somebody knocks at the door, you're not going to like, oh, let me pull out these chairs and these, you know, pull out table so we can have a place to have dinner or sit down and play some games. No, we have these rooms set up ahead of time. So I spent a ton of time in setting up my office to be able to create content. Mm -hmm. Yes, I had an office from the beginning when I moved to this house. Like, okay, I got to have an office space because I'm, I'm, I'm working from home. So let's walk through that journey and what it took me to figure that out. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm sure you're feeling overwhelmed because of all the questions and all the things that we go through that I went through, but I'm here to help you figure those things out. So let's take a little walk through memory lane so when I was working as a professional videographer, I did a lot of shoots on site. Uh, we, we had plenty of time to set up those stages, set up those scenes, because when we're shooting a short film or a short documentary, you want to make sure that everything looks good. You, you move around the tables, you make sure the backdrop looks good. You know, you have some things in the foreground, background, and then you're having that conversation. We spent a ton of time, 80% of all film is pre-production pre-production preparing for that production because mm -hmm. shooting time is so quick an actor comes in he knows his lines he says them he's done in 30 minutes he's out of there because their time is really expensive so pre-production is what i'm talking about when you're setting up your studio i didn't have that much time i didn't put that much time into setting up my studio i'd be like okay i'm going to be going on film and i'm going to record it and I'm going to be done. I'm going to have 30 days of video challenge. I'm going to do record every day a video. Hmm. Didn't really work out like I wanted to. So that's where this comes in. So who am I? Uh, I'm Junaid. I have over a decade of video production, content creation, and commercial project experience. I've worked, had the opportunity to work on a variety of short films, 10-hour films, where we got the team together in the morning, shot couple of scenes, couple of, you know, things together. And in the evening, we're done with the whole short film. It was that fast. Wow. So having having that pre-production, having that preparation, so important. And when we're creating a business, we prepare before we go launch, right? So think about it the same way. When you're creating content, you want to prepare as much ahead of time. So let's walk this through. Uh, I love helping others and navigating the technical world. I've been in tech for the past 30 years, and I love it. My studio setup journey. Before I get into this. This is really fun. Oh, my God. I know where this is going. <laughs> Everybody, I'm telling you, Junaid hangs out in our. You all know we have a mastermind. Junaid hangs out there with our amazing mastermind members because Junaid's one of our amazing rock stars, and he not a week goes by where Junaid is not on screen and people are like, Oh, look, look what his studio, look, look what his camera's doing now. Like what, what the heck? How did he do that? It's, it's so annoying. So keep going. Junaid. <laughs> so it all started when I wanted to, I had created a course around mobile video production using your iPhone, just your iPhone, nothing else at all. Mm -hmm. But I, but, but, but I want to, but when I stood in front of a camera, to record that first introduction video, all I saw was yellow walls because mm -hmm. that's what my room was consist of. I didn't think of to paint the room because I was like, ah, that's too much time. I just want to be quick. So I was I was watching some videos on online and um, on LinkedIn. There's some people using backdrops. Oh, Tim, Tim. 
Tim Thanks, says, two of my favorite people, Chris and Junaid. <laughs> and I, I was like, oh, maybe I can buy a backdrop, 25 to $30. I can get a nice backdrop, put it up on the wall. So I ended up doing that. I set up the wall. I set up um, set up the camera, set up the lighting. It took me an hour and a half, two hours to set it all up, make sure everything, the batteries were charged, right, everything. Mm -hmm. And... I start to hit record on the camera. I had to go change my 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 kid's diaper. I had to make sure to feed the kids. I had to go, you know, take the dog out. Like think about all the things. Like you're spending two hours to just setting up something, just to think. Okay, I don't have the words that I'm gonna say to record mm -hmm. this video. So I come back the next day, and I'm recording. I hit the record button. I'm like, okay, this room is set up, and I couldn't get the words out of my mouth. I had the script up. I had not, not the script. I had the outline up, but I was like, where do I even begin? Like, why do people want to listen to me talk about this thing? Right. So let me walk you through what I, what, where I all started. Right. So this is the same room that I'm in just flipped around. The windows are now in front of me instead of behind me. Sure. And you can see that overexposure above my head and the, the lights. And, you know, I, I just still wanted to create content. I, I'm recording the podcast here. And I was like, I, w I wonder if I can find some of these videos. And, and lucky enough, I was able to find it because I didn't, I didn't anticipate that this is where I was going to end up. So I was like, okay, how can I get rid of those highlights? Let me add some curtains. Sure. It, you know, it brought some attention to my face, and but I'm still focusing on creating that content. Hmm. Upgraded my microphone because that, as a podcaster, you want to care, you want to take care of that audio. But I didn't really pay attention about the video because I'm still creating content. I did. It didn't stop me from creating content, but it didn't. I didn't feel good sharing those videos, mm -hmm. but I still kept creating the content. So then what I did, I was like, okay, let me go to my workshop. People are not going to question by my background because they know that I'm, I'm, I'm in a workshop. I'm talking about something related to working with the video. But that video didn't, didn't, the vision, you know, shooting my videos in there, the lighting was good because I, I use specific lighting. But uh, I'm just tripping all over myself. No, just you're good. So the... Did you, did you, I've, I, it's interesting. I've done the workshop thing too. Like I've actually gone to my shed because by the way, the audio is fantastic in a workshop, at least mm -hmm. in mine, tons of insulation and broken up structures, but I couldn't think of a way to theme everything I was going to say to be yeah. relevant in a workshop. Even though when I'm off work, I spend a lot of my time in there because I love tinkering yeah. with stuff. Um, by the way, shout out to your workshop. Tim's a little workshop jealous right there. Uh, anyway, so why did you leave the workshop? So the workshop was great when when I was building my beehives, building the hive you know, frames and whatnot. It, it made sense because I'm working in the workshop. Dude, you're a beekeeper uh, too. I'm a beekeeper. Yes. Oh my gosh, that's a whole nother line of questions. Whole nother episode. <laughs> okay, keep going. <laughs> uh, I was building this uh, bike stand for my for my bike so I could ride indoors. So I, I used the workshop, I created videos around that, but it didn't match my vision. Like I wanted to pe teach people how to create content, how to have a space, like focus on just teaching, but, mm -hmm. but the workshop didn't, it didn't, it just didn't make sense for me. So I was mm -hmm. like, you know, let's, let's just keep going. Like, so what did I do? I, I was like, wait, I already have the cameras. Why not I use, start using them? Cause I'm a filmmaker. I've been creating content. I've been creating content for others. So I started integrating my high-end DSLR cameras into my workflow, into my setup. So here I'm adjusting the camera. I'm praying around with the light. And my kids are having fun. Okay, so is that the same background you're sitting in front of now? This is the same background. This is the same yeah. backdrop that, said, that I'm sitting in front of right now. But you see by changing around the lens or changing around the backdrop, you can see like right now, see on, on right behind me, there's a computer tower, which is basically behind here. So I hit it by moving exactly. the camera over uh -huh. and making sure the backdrop had everything that I wanted. 
I built that wall up that you see mm -hmm. right here. Built that wall, wall up because I wanted that classic look of being in front of a wall. And then having adding the higher depth of field, what does that mean, right? The focal number on your lens that you see, it can be anywhere from F1.4 mm -hmm. or all the way up to F6, F7. That basically changes the focal distance between the front lens and the back lens. So depending on how small the number is, that's small. That's how small the focusing distance becomes. Okay. So in this camera, in this vision right now, that's a 50 millimeter f1.4 lens, meaning the distance between the focusing distance is really small. So anything that's outside of here is going to be blurred automatically. So my, um, by the way, shout out to your DSLRs. What kind of DSLR do you use, Tim Wilson? Absolutely. Tim, <clears throat> I'm using a Canon EOS R, which is a mirrorless camera along with an f2.8 40 millimeter lens, 40 millimeter lens on this one. And then on my other cameras, I have a larger yeah. range. So I'm here, checking, yeah. other lens, <laughs> right? And then this is my third lens, <laughs> which I can move around. Isn't this amazing, guys? Like, this is going to make us all feel like, well, crap, I'm not even going to try to start recording at home. <laughs> start. All right. So... This one's basically on the little slider, and you can you can see the micro movements a little bit. I didn't get a chance to set it up correctly, but it just adds that other dimension, that other dynamic, you know, look when you're creating content. Can I ask you one more camera question? Of course. So I'm using a Logitech. It's it's right up here on my screen. I'm using mm -hmm. a Logitech um, HD 1080p something. Yep. The one you get on Amazon. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't have that same depth of field look that you have. Um, yeah, Tim, that's incredible, right? I know. Um, but my studio is large. I mean, I'm, I'm, in, a, I'm in a big space. Mm -hmm. um, and that's because I, I don't have a true manual focus, right? It's just a digital lens. So oh, here's the difference between having... Way to go, Veronica. Look at that. That's right. Logitech team right here. Go Logitech. <laughs> Here's the difference between a DSLR or a mirrorless camera and a Logitech a webcam, the size of the sensor. Huh. Okay. So I wish I had some props, but let's say this is the size of the sensor on your Logitech camera, mm -hmm. right? And if I were to bring a sheet of paper, that's the size of a lens sensor on my camera. Okay. So the larger the sensor, the better uh, differentiation you can do. The, mm -hmm. the other thing that the camera has is that focal lens. Okay. By the way, um, hey, Peter, great to have you, man. Um, good to see you, dude. Yeah, Veronica <laughs> says good question too. So um, when you get done with the lens question, we gotta yes. go with the yeah. Keep going. So with with the lens, with a with a dedicated lens, you can control the f-stop. Okay. With webcams, they want to make sure that everything is in focus. So they're trying to focus in on my. So they're focusing everything. They have wall. infinite yeah, yeah. infinite okay. focus is what they call it. Okay. Now there are settings that you can play around using a Logitech camera software to have that differentiation again. Some cameras have that ability. Some cameras don't. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost hurtful. Thanks, I, I know Junaid's feeling good, but I'm, I'm a little hurt just deep <laughs> inside right here. <laughs> All right. So, over here. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Junaid. So Tim's uh, asking if I'm switching the cameras using the A10 Mini. And yes, I am. Now you must be, ans you must be wondering, what is an A10 Mini? No, you, you must be wondering, how long have you known Junaid, Chris? And I'd say about six months. How many <laughs> minutes has he had in that period of time? Three. So, yeah, he has a problem. <laughs> I do have a problem. <laughs> All, right, All right. So where, where are we going? I don't know. A10 Mini. So you're using the A10 Mini. Um, yeah. So what is an A10 Mini, right? An A10 Mini is, um, first of all, the name, the name A10. I was like, what is A10? A10 is actually... <laughs> A name of a uh, Egyptian god means 
they bring light and that's just a name that um they wanted to use the black magic people so let me switch to my fourth camera which enables me to hook up my iphone to the a10 mini i'm gonna lose my i'm gonna take my screen off for just a second so y'all can see just you nate if i can do that I, i'm gonna no it'll take my audio out if i do that never mind y'all go ahead all right so here you can see the multi view i have four inputs right here all right so oh, here's the four inputs one two three four and then on the bottom layer you can see one two three four cameras so these are the four different views that i can see and i can switch between the different views just by clicking tapping on these buttons so it just I, makes the the process very tactile and i'm not clicking around inside of a software window right while i'm trying to keep my eye on camera and stay with the script exactly the other device that i use is the stream bay uh sorry the stream deck which enables me to program different things in here so for for example if i wanted to if i wanted to use it to drive my slideshow. If I want to switch cameras, is want to, you know, throw up a, a little overview, or a, you know, a, a lower thirds or whatnot. It enables me to do that. So let me full screen this Stream Deck business. Um, this is the telephoto lens, so I can change the camera and show you what this all looks like. Then here are my different cameras. Here's the camera number one. It's right above the right above the monitor so it enables me to look directly at you and not at the screen whenever i'm having a call so mm -hmm. when i'm recording content can i just stop right but that one camera that's right above your screen that's really important guys because the um the the camera that's right above screen like my camera literally even though mine's crappy compared to Jane, don't go away Jane, with that other image we got to keep going through your studio but my camera hangs slightly below screen um so i have I can't see my entire screen. Um, Junaid does that as well. Just you're going to see pro tips when people are really connecting well on camera, they're looking at camera. Um, so the more you can put your zoom window, the person you're talking to or selling to right underneath or right behind that camera, the more they'll feel connected to you. Um, so yeah. Um, all right, keep going. Junaid. Thanks, Tim. Thanks, Tim. So, so that's what, I, that's my uh, main camera. Number one, then I got camera number two over here giving that side perspective. And there's that yellow wall that I was talking about underneath mm -hmm. <laughs> the black and red. Then I've got this third camera on the slider so it can oh go gosh. back and forth and has the ability to, you know, move top and bottom. So those are my four cameras. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cool. All right. So let's talk can you am i am i getting out of order if i start diving into go go, go back to your slides real quick let's just sure so i'm just gonna quickly go through so i added that depth of field being able to separate you as a subject so people focus on you now you'll see that i've got a bookshelf in the back with a lot of chaos but you can't tell what that chaos looks like in reality like mm -hmm. there's a ton of mess back there i i've been talking to myself to organizing it for the past six months but you know i'm just too busy looking good on camera over here <laughs> <laughs> so here's some other angles i kept playing with lighting and camera framing until i found the perfect blend so here the room is a little darker uh you know the backdrop still doesn't look the right way that i wanted it to look and mm -hmm. then here yeah, Veronica, good. Glad we answered that question awesome. for you. Perfect. Yeah. So here I'm, I'm, I replaced the background cabinets with proper, proper bookshelves. You can see that printer that's in that corner that eventually goes away. And I'm playing around with all those things. Like the, the printer is now gone. And here's the final look that, that ends, ends the video. Yeah, dude, your lighting, everything's amazing. I mean, it's like you're on a movie set. It's truly <laughs> amazing. Uh, Veronica right, says, yeah. Okay, that's not going to happen in my boat. My office turns into a salon lounge TV room after five. <laughs> yeah, for real. You know, but Veronica, you keep the, the boat thing, I think is so unique. It's so memorable. Like nobody is ever going to be disappointed with that. I think that's such a great talking point. I really do. Veronica, that. here's something really awesome 
that you can actually use that boat to drive subscribership on your YouTube channel. Hmm. So I'm part of um, a group, uh, YouTube for Bosses by, what's her name? Sunny Lanarduzzi. And she talks about this, there's this one uh, user, one YouTuber. <clears throat> she started her channel and it was very focused. She is traveling cross country. She has a pet snake and she's traveling in a van. <laughs> all right, yeah. pet snake, a van, a lady, all solo. She went from zero to two million users, subscribers within four or six weeks no way yeah because it was so unique that was her real very, life very very focused very unique very yeah very her right yeah huh yeah cn you never realize what your office looks like from across the desk until you should have pepper that's really true really true great to experience it too okay so junaid let's let's get into the weeds here can we can i ask you lighting questions absolutely that's a big struggle for a lot of us. We we can buy a, a cheap, even for me. Uh, by the way, Rock mentioned, um, Rock says, Chris, you need what I have, a Sony A5100. Love it and affordable. Rock, I will look into that. Um, I'm definitely not geeky enough to figure out a DSL. D, is it even D, is it DSL? D, well, DSLR, DSLR is yeah. are the older models there. That okay. It basically means a digital single lens reflector. Okay. But the new cameras that you want, that the the one Rock is mentioning, A5150, yeah. is a mirrorless cam. So it's a mirrorless, meaning it's a, it's it's like a sensor with a lens in front of it, similar to an iPhone. It's very simple, no moving parts. But it gets it done. Okay. Um. By the way, come on, Veronica. <laughs> you don't need a pet snake, though. That was just an idea. <laughs> just an iguana or a snake. Take your pick. <laughs> Take a pick. <laughs> Gotta be a reptile. <laughs> um, all right, so yeah, I'll check out that camera. If it would get, will that give me more depth of field? The one rocks using it will give you depth of field. So you would get the camera body, and then you would add a a lens in front of it, probably a 24, 40 millimeter lens. Okay, that will then control how how much view. So the reason I'm using a 40 millimeter lens is I don't want people seeing that side mm -hmm. of the room. So mm -hmm. now, let me give you a really uh, quick look of what that's going to look like if I had a different uh lens on the camera let's see so i'm going to switch over to my iphone mm -hmm. and you'll see that this is a much wider angle lens i have yeah. the camera closer to me uh -huh. but if i put it the same place where my old camera was you'll see that i can see more of my more, background. more of the background than you want to see more of the yeah. back that i want that i don't want people to see i just want them to focus on this mm -hmm. that little square right yeah so yeah, that's what the lens does. So okay. depending on how how large that backdrop is of, of yours, the foam, mm -hmm. you, sh you should be fine. And then you can play around with, okay, how much distance do I need to be from the camera to look the same size and, and have that depth of field? Gotcha. That's very helpful. Okay. So let's talk lighting for a second because a lot of us can find, I mean, honestly, the camera that comes on your MacBook Pro um, I used it the other day for um, one of our mastermind calls, actually, Junaid, because I was tired of standing mm -hmm. up. So I sat down and I turned it on. I was like, this is actually really good. Um, I got a new MacBook Pro six months ago. I hadn't used it since. And I was like, well, this, this works. Yep. So we have a, the lighting, though, often becomes the tripping point for most of us. I, I can get a, my microphone. My studio mm -hmm. mic is hanging right here, by the way. I have a mm -hmm. blue Yeti. Um, nice. And uh, it's what... Um, I mean, if I'm far away, it's that far from from my yep. uh, my Perfect. mouth, I guess. Um, sound is relatively easy to capture, even if you're in a noisier space. A condenser like a Blue Yeti or something like that. It's a condenser, mm -hmm. right? It's okay. Yep, pretty 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 on point. I've got my Blue Yeti right here. Okay, pretty close to me. Yeah, but I set it up so it doesn't show up on camera because I know a lot of people have it like like this or you know yeah. like it's because. The reason it's in their shot is because the lens that they're using ah. at the wide angle. So there's no way to getting away from having that lens, that microphone in their camera. 
for me when I was first podcasting is because I freaking got a blue Yeti and I was so proud of it. So I had oh, yeah, to check out my blue Yeti. Oh, my can't. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, all right. So the lighting though. Um, all right. So here's the lighting. I'll, I'll yeah. show you what my lighting looks like when I don't have the studio lights on. Okay. Oh, wow. Significantly different. Right. So this is my overhead lights. Yeah. And a lot of us have over lights, mm -hmm. overhead lights, or we have lamps. Mm -hmm. Now, in the overhead lights, a lot of us use yellow lights or soft white. Yep. So I, I was like, soft white is not the look for me. I'm going to go with daylight. So I went and replaced all my overhead lights to daylight. So I still look good, but I have the that. You got shadow. Raccoon eyes. Yeah. Because it's coming from above, it's shadowed. It's yeah. Coming from above. And all the lights, like everywhere you go, we have the same lighting problem because the lights are coming from above. They're not mm -hmm. coming from where the camera is going to be shooting from. So where do you place your studio lights then? Great question. So let me turn them on. Maybe I should have left it off. Um, and let's see if this camera will do. So my my main key light is right in front of me at 45 degree angle, about, I don't know, 30 inches, not 30 inches, but not too far. Okay. And it, at the lowest setting, like it's not even turn up the bright. It's just close enough. Do you have a back view of that? Yeah, I can do a back view of the light or the side view of it. I um, really appreciate cool it. about that? Um, what's awesome about man, I, I so appreciate you giving us the, the backstage tour here. Okay, so got it. Here's a side view of the light. Mm -hmm. now, this box is called a soft box. Okay, a lot of the times you'll buy a ring light or any light, and then you'll find that it has this, this diffuser. Mm -hmm. Hey, look, you can still see me. You'll <laughs> <laughs> You'll have a little diffuser, and that diffu sometimes that diffuser is good enough. Sometimes it'll still cast a harsh light. So adding a soft box makes sure that you have soft like light lighting you up and you you know it it just creates that cool thing. Then I have a secondary light on this side, okay, again with another soft box, just to cr give that nice look, that clean, sharp. And and are those daylight bulbs in there, or These are, are they daylight like bulbs. white light? Okay, they're yeah. they're bright so, white. Okay. Yeah, daylight white. It's it's rated at fifty six hundred K or even yep. six thousand K. So it's it's more bluer than it is yellow because when you go look outside, even though sunlight feels it's, it's yellow. But it is not. It's much. It has all the colors, okay. and you can buy these kind of lights from anywhere: Home Depot, Lowe's. Just get the daylight version, not the soft white like I put in the lamps next to the couch. Okay. Yes, yes. Right, I mean, cool. soft lights are great when you just want to relax. You want to just just want to chill. But when you want to create video, you want to make sure that you have the truest white light that you can find. So then you come and uh, look good. Okay, Veronica. Good luck with your workshop. Thanks so much, Veronica, for hanging out. Great to see you. Um, all right, so you have a key light um that's right up here in front of you or right straight right in front of you yep and then you have another big that big uh, rectangle light off to the side why do you have yeah. two lights um just to add some more dimension i guess um let me see if i can turn one of them off so i'll turn off the side one studio so here's the side one off so it creates more drama. Uh huh. So I wanted yep. a little less drama. <laughs> a little more documentary style. Yeah. Yeah. So you turned off. That was the side light. That was at the big, big rectangle. That was a big one on the side. Yes. Okay. Cool. Cool. And, and then you have, like, for me. Oh, this is if I turn the key light off. Okay. You see the shadow. You see this little shadow coming on here because I just okay. have one light source, and it's not turn up really bright it's just normal lighting okay and junaid i'm not comparing my studio to yours at all just for those for those watching from home <laughs> like you and i are um i have a i have three lights and i have one that's right here i'm gonna turn it off 
I guess I would call that my key light. Mm -hmm. That's putting most light on my face. That mm -hmm. leaves basically the big box light you have on the side. Same thing yeah. over there. Um, and then I also have a light that's shining on. Um, let me get that back on. I wish I had fancy buttons that do it all for me. Um, <laughs> then I also have a light shining on my background because I didn't want to cast a shadow. Yes. And I'm only, I'm probably four, I'm, my, my shoulders are probably four feet away from that wall for those of you at home. So one thing you want to watch out for is in my right, Janet, you want to be far enough away mm -hmm. from the thing behind you so that, um, like, see if I can cast a shadow. Well, yep, I, got, I see a shadow on your left. On yeah. Left. Yeah. So you just want to make sure you're not casting a shadow because it gets distracting. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I just have a simple little light shining on the back. Is that the right idea? Yep. That's the, that's the perfect idea. Uh, and then you want the light to be above and pointing down. Like, so it's not directly from above you, but rather something like this. Okay. So am I right? Am I looking good or am I, should I raise right? my higher? No, I think yours are good because you're not, you're not casting that shadow. So okay. let's say if you're this, if you're sh shining like this and your background was two feet apart, mm -hmm. you still won't see that shadow because that shadow will be hidden by your body. Gotcha. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Makes tons of sense. And then, um, how about, um, how about a tip for those of us who wear glasses? Oh, that's a really good question, Sian. That's an excellent question. So a lot of the times you, you'll you see these ring lights, they're designed to to be directly in front of you, mm -hmm. facing you. And then you'll see that shine coming from your glasses. So mm -hmm. what you want to do, raise it up a little higher and bend it down by 45 degrees. So what that'll do, it'll still reflect, but it'll reflect down, not back to the camera. Got it. So when you're shining directly, it's gonna the camera is gonna pick it up, but if you come at an angle, just think about angles, right? If you drop it at an angle, it's gonna reflect somewhere else and not directly back to the camera. Just like when you're wearing, I picked up a new pair of sunglasses this weekend, and they're they're reflective on the front. And I was mm -hmm. actually thinking about that because I do a ton of lives from like the park or from my skateboard or wherever, and yeah. I thought, oh no, this is gonna reflect the camera, but oh well, y'all will see my iPhone. Um, we all have one. Um, yeah, thanks. So distracting. So, CN, I noticed that when I was looking, I uh, stood in the studio with my glasses on just for kicks, and I noticed that my my main lights were high enough above me that they weren't, unless I tilted my head up, I wasn't mm -hmm. able to see the reflection of my studio lights. I could see the rest, but I couldn't. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Excellent. Great question. Thank you. That's a good question. Yeah. All right. Am I am I getting us off track, Junaid? I have a million more questions, but I don't. If you got more. No, I think we we're good. We, we can okay. do the questions. I don't have anything else to sh um put in here. Okay. Um, if you want me to put a slide up, I can. The the slide was just around five make five tips keys to making a great video. Oh, cool. Having yeah, a, let's put that up there. Yeah, that's good. Having a good story, right? We all love stories, and when you have a good story, the lighting and the camera and the audio and personal background tie that story together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, they really do. That's a really good point. Um, a personalized background. I do not have a personalized background. But Chris, that is your background. No matter <laughs> every video that we've seen you, you see the <laughs> same background. So it it's kind of personalized to you. <laughs> people that know you I'm like okay this is chris in his office yeah thing. i actually used to have an extra sheet of this phone that i would cram into like a stuff sack and take with us because we travel a lot in the summer yeah. and i would just pin it up in whatever airbnb we were staying in so i could just kind of keep up with some videos anyway i yeah. get that because it was another thing to carry <laughs> 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 um okay so look can i ask a microphone question yes there's compressor and condenser microphones. We don't have to get too into the weeds on either one, but which is the one for searching like on Amazon and we need to pick up a new microphone. What do we get? Lapel so, mic, something that sits on the desk, a boom mic. I mean, it just quick direction here. Yeah, so the different the reason they have different microphones is for the different types of audio that you might be recording. Mm -hmm. And you'll notice that um, they use a lot of boom mics when you're shooting, when you're shooting on set, you'll have a boom operator holding a mm. microphone up above the actor as they're shooting because they don't want the actors wearing anything. 
because that's not how <laughs> that's how it works in movies, right? Like right. Here's your microphone for this <laughs> acting scene. No, no, you have boom mics. So the boom mics have a parabolic um, sensor, meaning it can record audio from farther away, mm -hmm. anywhere from six to seven feet away. So they can have that microphone up there, record audio from them. So I have some parabolic or some shotgun microphone set up that help me record audio when I'm not sitting in front of my desk. Okay. Condenser mics are really good be because they can pick up the most subtlest sounds. And that's really what the Blue Yeti simple. is. That's the one that we're using, the Blue Yeti. Okay. So the closer you are to the microphone, the less uh, the less effort you need to put in and the less effort it takes for the microphone to pick up that sound. There's a lot of people using ASMR, creating ASMR content using these microphones because they can be like, oh, what's going on? <laughs> right? <laughs> really creepy stuff. Um, <laughs> It's great for podcasting. It's great for you know voiceovers, anything voice related. But when it comes to creating content, you want to be aware of okay, where is the microphone going to go? You can have a little lapel mic because that's that's an omnidirectional microphone, and it'll capture the audio, anything that's around the area. So they have to turn the gain down, so you know it only records the audio for the, the person that's holding it. I made a huge mistake of putting two lapel mics and we we're sitting like really close to each other and the gain was turned up really high and it, the audio was like so horrible. I was like, I can't use any of that. <laughs> You're hearing like a little, yeah. <laughs> okay. So for most of us yeah. that are doing content creation, we're coaching, we're teaching, we're doing Zoom calls, obviously, mm -hmm. um, our Facebook lives, whatever, from us, from a stationary place where we can set up a studio something a, a condenser mic like a blue yeti or something like that is the way yep, to go and that's mic that you can put a uh, at a distance away so it's not showing up on frame okay. or a boom mic boom mics are are really cool because you can put it further away mm -hmm. and still record some good audio okay all right great um so for for those of you just looking in here um junaid is using a blue yeti in front of him right now and i'm using a blue yeti right here in my studio that is uh about two inches farther than that, about this far away from me. Um, okay, and then uh, cameras, we've covered that, lighting, we've covered that, and then let's just talk simple. If we don't wanna get into the amazing setup that you've got on your desk, computer-wise, I'm rocking a, a MacBook Pro here. Um, I I think that's good enough. Is there, do you have any suggestions on just the computer you gotta have, or is any relatively new computer gonna be fine? Any any relatively new computer will do just fine. Now, Rox asked a good, good question about USB microphone or XLR. Again, it all comes down to who the person is that's going to be doing this creation. Are you spending some money to buy the XLR equipment? But because sure, you can get an XLR microphone, then you'll need to get a a, a controller hmm. to be able to convert that. USB mics are great. For starters, and, and the Blue Yeti has, you know, seen a lot of, have heard a lot of sounds. They're they're all over the world. People are using them. Simple USB microphone just to get you started and mm -hmm. capture really good audio. Okay, cool, awesome. Um, and then last so, question. Go ahead. Um, you were mentioning what's the simplest setup, right? So any computer yeah. that can handle that you're used to, that you're comfortable with, mm -hmm. will do the job. Um, I could be using a, a PC right now, but my PC is broken. <laughs> I need to replace the motherboard. But I could. Uh, the reason I'm using a MacBook because this is my main machine. I do all my work, my design work, all the user experience work. So I'm using this. I've gotten accustomed to it. I've gotten, you know, I've trained on software that's designed for it. So going on Facebook Live, using Ecamm, doing all sorts of stuff. And ooh, mm. and that's that's some of the other thing that I want to showcase if if you yeah will. go for it we got five more minutes we'll take oh, all then, the then it's probably not worth it <laughs> <laughs> but but this will be this will be for those who stick to the end i guess okay well let me ask one more question then you can dive in go there and yeah um just audio like in my studio obviously i have some sound stuff around me um, I found that super helpful just for those of you who are trying to figure this out too. If you have a room like my room I'm in right now, 
is hardwood floors, smooth, hard ceilings, smooth, hard walls. Even the shutters over our windows are those plantation shutters that are hard structures. Um, so this is four inch acoustic foam. There's a difference. This is not soundproofing. So if you have a noisy door you want to cover, you got to get something soundproof. That's really expensive. But this um, acoustic foam just diffuses the noise and makes it not echoey. And then on each side of me here, I have some blankets I got from Amazon. They're like 75 bucks a piece. And they're just basically sound baffling um, sheets. They're eight foot tall and four feet wide, I think. Um, and it's super simple. So without a lot of money, even just hanging one or two curtains. And if you don't have any money you don't want to spend on, go get a few beach towels or quilts out of the closet and hang them up around the room you're in. It will, it will yep. make a significant difference. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It'll create um, some of the greatest places to record audio for your podcast is. I know where you're going. Your closet. Your closet. Absolutely. Your closet. Seth Godin talks about it. It's like, just go to the closet. You don't need any room. Just go to the closet, record your podcast. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. All right. So, Junaid, dive in, man. What are you going to show us? All right. So, this is what I was going to show. So, the reason I picked the Mac or, you know, PC, people can set up these, these scenes on their computers. Yeah, rock. Moving blankets are good too. Yes. Yeah, any blanket that's going to absorb sound, you just mm -hmm. don't want that reflection. So, so when I'm going live, I want to create a special look. Dang, that's so yeah. cool. Right. So I I am using software called Ecamm Live. That's able. To, that's you're able to create custom front covers and layouts. So let's say let's say I'm doing an interview. I don't know if this is set up, but <laughs> I can have multiple people come on i have the names this is similar to what you're doing with stream yard right I can, have you know? <laughs> I can have all people i can have a screen set up like this so i can you know Dude. go through my little slides this is what's happening blah 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 right so and that, you can't live i just googled it that's just a software you can just be running on your desktop while you're doing the live thing yes oh that's brilliant so okay. I'm, I'm switching back to the other camera. So I was, I was using the camera. I was using the virtual camera that Ecamm Live puts out. So then mm -hmm. I can go live. And the recent version of Ecamm, they've enabled us to bring in guests. So it's just like StreamYard, but it's running on your computer and not through a browser. So it's pretty cool. And then you can you can have this custom look, your your logos, your things. Nice. And then you essentially produce a show. And then, then you can put that out on YouTube, Facebook, wherever you want it. Mm -hmm. So that's brilliant. I'm just setting up those right things now. up, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much, man. Appreciate appreciate you giving me the time. Oh, you kidding, dude? This is amazing. Man, thanks. I'm I'm actually looking at and pulling up Ecamm right now because I want to be able to do some of those cool little screen cover things. <laughs> um, so do you use Ecamm live instead of StreamYard or instead of Zoom or something like that when you're going even live on Facebook? Yeah. It'll stream to Facebook like we're using StreamYard right now. Yes. Yes. Brilliant. Brilliant. It's, it's, it's been around for at least over 10 years, I think. I used it. I used to use Skype call recorder. When I just clicked on that, I realized, oh, it's the same company. And it was yeah. great. Yeah. And Skype call record recorder is the same company. Video video files. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. That's brilliant. Okay. All right. First of all, last of all, whatever. Junaid is in this group. He is, yes, in our mastermind. There is no affiliate commission or anything we have for me having Junaid in here. He's one of our rock stars in our group. And it's just so amazing to have Junaid hanging around with us. So Junaid, thank you for your time. Thank you for your expertise. I know this is very expensive and we're getting you for free. So we don't take that for granted. I really, really appreciate it. Junaid also teaches and trains people on this in a mastermind group setting and in some courses and in some one-on-one -on -one consulting. If you want to figure this out, Junaid will like literally you can pick up your iPhone and, and call with Junaid and walk around your studio and he will tell you, here's how to set it up. Here's how to go through the process. So if you're struggling with this, like I'm telling you, you don't do like me. I wasted, I, I'm not kidding. I promise you I've wasted hundreds of hours looking at reviews and cameras and microphones and Amazon and playing with lights and, and trying and failing. And Junaid can like in a 30 minute call be like, okay, here's your shopping list. So Junaid, I'm going to drop your link down here. Um, how do you want people to get in touch with you? Is it like just straight through Facebook or is there a better page? Facebook is the, is the best way to go. Okay. 
we'll we'll set you up. Um, thank, thank you, Grenade. You, you are amazing. Love your studio. Super jealous. <laughs> and thank you for showing you up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Have a great right. Monday. Y'all have a fantastic week. We'll talk soon. Bye, guys. Right. Bye.